Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. My final thoughts on what can only be described as one of the best role-playing experiences I've ever had. Dragon Quest X is a gargantuan video game. It currently spans the primary game and two expansion packs with a third one on its way sometime in 2017. It is literally an everlasting Dragon Quest experience that blends elements of all the previous Dragon Quest games into one massive universe. Having completed the original version several months ago, I decided now was the perfect time to review the game. Over the last several years, Project COE's presence on YouTube has grown significantly thanks to our Sega Saturn reviews, our retro reviews and reviews of modern day current gen classics. One element that really makes our content unique is our Let's Play Dragon Quest X special feature. This series was suggested by Steven, our COE Master Race member number one, and my original plan with the series was just to show people what Dragon Quest X was all about. I never intended or thought I would actually be able to beat the game. Everything changed when I met Cranberry, as she is a DQ10 guru, and ever since then, we have had weekly adventures that won't stop until Dragon Quest X officially stops, or when Square Enix pulls the plug, that is. It has been one of the best gaming experiences I've ever had, and I can only hope this review shines a light on why this is such an incredible game. As of the post date of this review, Dragon Quest X is not available anywhere in the English speaking world. In fact, if it weren't for the Chinese version, it would be 100% Japanese exclusive. There have been rumors, hints, and lies that a North American version was in the works, but as of today, there has been no official confirmation that the game will ever be released here. Yes, Square Enix has publicly said if there's enough interest or demand, they would consider it, but as of right now, the game isn't scheduled for release in North America or Europe. As such, this review is based entirely on the Japanese version. I should also mention that I have played through the PC version extensively and am currently experiencing version 2.2 storyline. The review will encompass my thoughts and impressions of the original version of the game, albeit updated with the latest version 3 patch. The game's breakdown is rather interesting. It starts off with an offline story mode that lasts for a handful of hours and whose purpose is to ease you into the classic Dragon Quest gameplay. You start at a village talking to non-playable characters before venturing out into the open world and taking on monsters, earning gold, buying weapons and armor and traversing a dangerous dungeon and finally facing off against a nasty boss. Battles are completely turn-based except that you can freely move around an open 3D space. You can attack, have access to spells, items, and abilities. The combat system itself is very reminiscent of just about all the other Dragon Quest games, with the exception of you being able to freely move around. Each battle has an active area, with a clear white circle expanding around the perimeter. If you leave this area, you essentially escape or flee the battle. It's really that simple. After you play through the offline portion, an event occurs where you have to create your online avatar. You'll notice I'm not speaking about the storyline and, well, for good reason. Most of it I don't have details on. What I do know is that you're essentially resurrected in another character and eventually have to stop an evil demon lord from destroying the world. That's basically part one of Dragon Quest X, with each expansion bringing new threats with it and continuing the storyline from there. Eventually, you can revert back to your original offline avatar if you so desire, or stick with your newly created online avatar. With the original game, you could select between the following races, Weddy, Ogre, Dwarf, Elf, or Poklipo. Each race has its own unique starting area and starting questline. That's right, numbered quests are back following Dragon Quest IX. 
If you enjoy the breakdown of 9's storyline and adventure, you're going to absolutely adore Dragon Quest X, as the two games share a lot in common. The original subtitle for Dragon Quest X was loosely translated to Awakening of the Five Tribes Online or Rise of the Five Tribes Online. And that makes sense since there are five races you can select from. The game plays very much like an offline, story-driven Dragon Quest game, where you take on the role of a hero on a massive quest to rid the land of an evil demon lord in the land Avastoltia. There are several continents, with each race having its own, but eventually you'll be able to traverse the whole world, unlock new areas, a casino, and much, MUCH more. Each new area you visit features a self-contained storyline that either loosely or directly connects to the larger conflict. Think of it like the recently released Dragon Quest VII Remaster on the 3DS, where each new island you unlock has its own storyline that's sometimes tied into the larger world storyline. The same is true here. Where things get crazy though is with the sheer volume of quests available. There are hundreds upon hundreds of quests available for you to complete. Just about everything in the game requires a quest to be completed in order for you to gain access to new level caps, new abilities, new classes, heck, even new hairstyles. This is how the game world operates. You find someone that offers a quest, see what the requirements for completion are, go fight some enemies, and hand in the item the enemies dropped. 90% of the optional quests work like that. Story quests, while somewhat similar, will usually involve talking to a specific person, hunting down enemies, talking to other people, visiting towns and dungeons, and taking on a boss. With all of these quests, it's a damn good thing there's a handy quest log to keep track of all the quests you have. As the game has evolved, Square Enix has added more and more features to streamline quests, which include allowing you to see exactly where you need to go to complete a quest. That's another element of this game that's so unique. It continues to evolve over time with fan feedback. If something isn't working and fans complain enough about it, the developers will go in and change or fix the problem. This is standard fare for MMOs, but it's still very surprising to see in a Dragon Quest game. Considering the giant size of the game, it's a good thing you have different modes of transportation available. Since we're talking about version 1 here, you can purchase mounts or vehicles that allow you to zip around in style. There are countless incredible designs available, and yes, you can even use real-world money via the Dragon Quest X store to unlock some really special rewards or vehicles, such as the two-seater that Cranberry and I always use. It's completely not required, however, as you can unlock some really nice mounts in the game itself, just like you'd expect from any MMORPG. If you've been a longtime fan of the Dragon Quest series, you should have a good idea of what this game is all about. But there's one element I haven't discussed yet. Classes. As the game has evolved, more and more classes have been introduced. Right now, the following classes are currently available. Warrior, Priest, Mage, Martial Artist, Thief, Minstrel, Gladiator, Paladin, Magic Knight, Ranger, Sage, Superstar, Monster Tamer, Item Master, Dancer, and Fortune Teller. As you level up, you gain skill points that can be applied either to a passive skill list or a weapon skill list. For example, you could level up a Warrior and allocate all the points to the Warrior class itself, which will grant passive abilities that can then be used in any other class. Or you could allocate points to, say, swords, which could then be used by other classes that use swords. There are specific abilities that are 100% exclusive to that class, though. If you switch classes, which can be done at any bar in-game, you'll then start back at level 1 for that class. The good news is that it's super easy to grind levels in the game thanks to random dungeons at the Labyrinth, or if you don't play very often, you're rewarded with Metal Slime tickets which essentially allows you to play a very special dungeon where you're guaranteed to critical strike every slime in the dungeon. Needless to say, you can go from level 1 to 20 with one run in this special dungeon. Even without that though, you can still grind out levels very easily until you start to reach the higher levels. By now, everything I've discussed should make the game sound like a traditional Dragon Quest game, except one that's very large. And believe me, it is very, very large. 
That's the good news. You could theoretically play the whole game, or at least a lot of the game, just like you would a traditional Dragon Quest game, alone. Party members can be made up of other people's avatars. These people can be friends of yours or random folks you just happen to see at the bar. Let's take Cranberry as an example. If she logs out and allows other people to rent her character, I could theoretically go to the bar and rent her character for the day. What's really cool is that if someone rents your character while you're offline, that character actually gains experience. So how awesome is that? This isn't even going into detail about recruiting monsters to your party, which is equally awesome. There's just so much to talk about with this particular game. So where does the MMO elements come into play, you might ask? Well, they come into play absolutely everywhere. This world is chock full of other players. While you can rent out different AI-controlled characters, why do that when you can actually pair up with a real-world partner or a team? Creating a party of four friends is an incredible experience in the Dragon Quest universe. There's absolutely nothing like it. I can't even begin to tell you how many different events there are in the game from slime races to season events like the buff Santa Quest and so much more. These experiences are incredible in and of themselves, but when you bring other players into the mix, it's just amazing. I think Dragon Quest X would be one of the greatest RPG experiences I ever had if it was a single player game, but making it an online game has made it that much better. I kid you not, this is a brilliant game. I know many people were worried that the story would suffer or that the game just wouldn't be as interesting as the rest of the series, but nothing could be further from the truth. This is an unbelievable game that oozes the Dragon Quest charm in every single aspect. The graphics, while certainly dated by 2016 standards, still hold up well. The game was originally launched on the Wii back in August 2012 and was eventually brought over to the Wii U and PC. There's also a streaming version that's available for the 3DS, Android, and iOS. Square Enix also confirmed a PlayStation 4 and NX version will be released at some point in 2017. While lots of us hardcore Dragon Quest fans are hoping the PS4 and NX versions will see a graphics increase, even if they don't, the game is artistically beautiful. The level design and environments are spectacular and yet again feel as though they belong in any other Dragon Quest game. There is noticeable slowdown depending on which version you're playing, and unfortunately the non-streaming versions are all IP blocked, meaning you'll have to use a VPN in order to trick the game into thinking you're physically in Japan. Now this slows things down somewhat too, which sucks, but even with those annoyances, I can still easily recommend this game as is. Akira Toriyama's return to design all of the enemies and they look amazing. The soundtrack is one of the best, if not the best soundtrack ever composed for the series. There are a wealth of tracks and each fits the setting perfectly. There are lots of themes and music from previous entries in the series, and yes, Koichi Sugiyami returned to compose the music, and he hasn't lost his touch one bit, which is quite amazing considering his advanced age. To wrap up this already massive review, I can safely say this is the best Dragon Quest game ever released, mainly because it never ends. You could devote years of your life to playing this game, which is exactly what I've already done at this point. It takes everything you like about the previous installments and brings them together in the largest world ever created for a Dragon Quest game. As a game that constantly evolves, continues to grow, and one that just gets better and better with age, I can safely say that everyone on this side of the planet is missing out by not having access to Dragon Quest X. I can only hope and pray that Nintendo localizes this game and has it as some sort of exclusive for the North American and European launch of the NX. That would be an absolute dream come true. As it is now, this is the best import video game I have ever played. You know it's an incredible experience when the game's not even in your native tongue and you still manage to log in hundreds of hours into it and you continue to play it to this very day. I cannot wait to see what the future has in store for this masterpiece, and I pray that one day you too will be able to enjoy everything Dragon Quest X has to offer.